Hi everyone, I'm Wei Jian from Sydney Uni. Thanks for coming to my presentation about periphrastic causation in SAC. So, first of all, just a bit of background about SAC. People in the SAC language. The SAC people refer to themselves as Czech, and they are believed to have originated from China, moved across Vietnam, and eventually settled in nowadays Laos and Thailand. Their language, Ten Czech, is a Thai language, but due to their migration history, um, it has been heavily influenced by Vietnamese. So in Laos, there are currently two main areas of SEC residents. One of them is known as the Nam Noi area, which is shown on the map here. So it's in central Laos. And as you can see, it's uh, Vietnam on the other side and Thailand just across the Mekong River. So in this area, there are four SEC speaking villages shown um, you know, on the map as the, as the pins. Altogether, there are about two ho uh, 200 households with um, above 1,000 speakers. So the Sec villages in this area are surrounded by also Asiatic groups, um, the Bru, the Cree, and um, to a lesser extent the Vietnamese on the other side, and of course um, uh, Lao from the lowland. So um, causation in Sec, or cause of uh, constructions in Sec, uh, let's first have an overview. There are three main types of cause of the constructions in Sec. One of them are the lexical cause effect paths, such as ga, kill, and bri, die. And importantly, the causing verb, ga, has more specific semantics than simply causing, um, you know, someone or something to die, right? The second construction is cause-effect um, clause linking. So we have the clause linkers such as ya, because of, come, because, nang, then. Finally, there's this multi-verb causative constructions, uh, which are of the general template. There is the first noun phrase and then a causative uh, marker or a ca causation indicating morpheme. A second noun phrase, and then um, you know a verb or a verb phrase denoting the event that was caused. And the general meaning is that X causes Y to do something, or MP1 causes MP2 to do something. Well, there are two subtypes of this uh, multiverb causation. So, in one of them, the causative uh, meaning is co-lexified with manner of interpersonal manipulation, degree of coercion, etc. So the examples are toy to tell someone to do something. Su to invite someone to do something, and sung to order someone to do something. So these are the verbs that can go into the uh, causative slot, right? And the second subtype of multi-verb causative constructions in SAC are uh, what I call um, periphrastics. So there is um, a range of semantically generic causative markers that can go into the slot that occur in the ma uh, matrix slots. And then the causative event occurs as a complement of that causative marker. So. In this talk, in this study, I'm going to argue that SAC has three multiverb uh, constructions that are describable as periphrastic causatives with H, HIT, and O, respectively, in the causative slot. They appear to be in a paradigmatic relation in a synchronic perspective, but I argue that only the H causative construction is a full-fledged um, causative construction, whereas the HIT causative construction is better analyzed as a resolutive. And the, the last one, the O causative construction, is a newly emerging construction that is not yet as productive and um, you know, widely attested as the H causative construction. Okay, so now um, I'm going to give a, a brief description of these constructions before I present my argument. So periphrastic causative constructions, um, this is just a reminder of what I talked to before, and there are three markers possible. Um, that can be, you know, put in our slot, right? So there's this h, which is identified with the lexical with the lexical verb h, meaning to give, and the construction described intentional causation of an agent of cause e. The hit marker is identified with the lexical verb to do or to make, which conveys a situation in which the causer actively, um, directly, direct, directly acts on the cause e and brings about a change of um, state in the cause e. And finally, o is identified with uh, the verb take and the construction um, signals interpersonal manipulation of an agent of causa on an agent of causi. So let's look at some, look at some examples. The her, give, um, the, the her, the give cause of the construction, intentional causa, and the marker is usually unstressed unless there are some other prosodic uh, constraints which prefer the um, full stress. So example number one, so you cut a grass in order to make the rice beautiful. This is the case of indirect causation, right? You don't directly act on 
the the rice. You just do something else which um, makes the rice um, grow beautifully. Second example is direct causation. So So he pounded the cloth with a hammer to tear it. And third example is preventative. So in this case, the negator bo is combined with the causative marker he. Um, so the example is ma bo he tang ri. So they don't allow us to weed dry fields. And we see that in this example, he is fully stressed. The reason is that it has to phonologically host two proclitics. So the um, hit do make causative construction, um, you know, direct axon, bring about a change of state. Um, the first example, number four, man hit a peeing arm, hit a roaring arm, the bumi, so hit a peeing arm, hit a roaring arm, mean the same thing, right? The dragon makes a boat flip. Um, example number five is also similar, so it goes, hit my neck on die, so grandma is trying to, um, you know, cool down the water for her grandson, right? So she said, hit my neck on. Okay, and a third type with O in the cause of the slot. The example comes from a phone conversation between a mother, the speaker A, who lives in the village, and her son, speaker B, who lives, uh, who works in town. And this reference here, Liu Bung, is another son of Ace, who, who's also in the town. So the example goes like, A said, I told you, Bung and I only Bung ma na. So you call Liu Bung and get Liu Bung to return. B said, Yeah, okay. And then A said, Ah, guak nian na na. So you send money with him, right? Let's take this phrase, only Bung ma, out and examine it. Well, there are two possible readings of this phrase um, out of the context. One is that you take Liu Bung, ma, uh, Liu Bung back. What that means is that you um, get in control of Liu, Liu Bung and you two come back together, right? So this is actually the more common reading of this phrase when taken out of context, but this is not what the speaker intends. What the speaker intends is this second reading, which is that you get Liu Bung to return or you make Liu Bung to return. Now, how do we know that? Well, it's because, first of all, um, in a previous context, A had already asked B to return, and then B rejected, right? So we know that B is not returning together with Liu Bung. And um, it's also important to, um, you know, pay attention to the second utterance by A, who says, So A wants B to send money with Liu Bung, which is further evidence that, that B is not coming back together, right? So um, this tells us that the second interpretation, the causative interpretation, is what is intended by the speaker. So um, uh, a final note on the description is that there's also this hit hurt combination, do make combination, and um, it is illustrated by example number seven. So hit herman pon lao bai They did something to make it, namely our life, easier. And there are two possible analyses. One is that, you know, following uh, Enfield's analysis for Lao and Iwasaki and Ingapon's um, analysis for Tai is to claim this as a fourth type of causative construction. But an alternative is that we consider it, um, you know, um, composed of adding this hit, extra verb hit, before the her causative construction. And this is the same as uh, Depkan Yanan's analysis for Thai. So how do we know that? Well, first of all, the whole meaning of the construction of hit her in sec, uh, in this example at least, is compositional, is uh, semantically compositional of hit do make and her construction. And this analysis is also more parsimonious because we know that it is possible to add a verb before her specifying the exact causing activity, the exact, you know, um, event or activity that the causer did to bring about the caused event. And this is shown in, in example number eight. So the speaker said, right? We expose them, expose the trees to the sun to dry them. So it is more parsimonious because we know that it's possible to make such combinations in sec. So a quick summary of what we know, um, uh, which is shown in the table. Um, I'm not gonna read them, but this, Description gives rise to the question of how did they enter this apparent synchronic paradigmatic relation? And this question is also going to inform us about whether these constructions truly, you know, stand in a synchronic paradigmatic relation, right? So how do we do that? Well, I propose the following um, path of um, semantic change in grammaticalization. 
and let's look at them one by one. So the first one, I propose that the her, the give cost of the construction, uh, started this way. So the her verb begins as a verb meaning to transfer an object. And then it gets this meaning of transference of agency in purpose of context, which um, gives us the cause of uh, meaning of the of the market, right? So there are four stages of this development. The first um, stage is we use her in the literal meaning of giving someone something in a handling dispatch construction. So example number uh, number nine, su jap he hing. So you catch a chicken to give us. Now I know that th there is um, a sense of Benefactiveness in this example, but there's no doubt that her give at least conveys uh, the meaning of the transference of object, right? So the agent comes into control of an object and transfer it, and transfers it to the recipient. So after this stage, we can chain another verb phrase, you know, after the structure just now, which denotes what the recipient does to the object. So this is the um, example number ten um, illustrates that. So jia he hing ma kuo gin, you catch the chicken and give it to us, exactly like stage one. But ma kuo gin says what we as recipients are going to do with it, right? So there is a purposive interpretation which arises as a common implicature of multi-verb constructions of this kind of configuration. And uh, which means that, you know, by enacting event one, you know, by the fact that you catch and give a chicken, um, you have event two as a purpose, so you intend to, um, you know, give the chicken for us to go back and, and cook and eat it, right? In other words, agent one, you, not only transfers an object, but also transfers agency simultaneously to us as a recipient. So we, he, as a recipient now, can do something with it, as a second agent, can do something with it, right? So, um, in, in a diagram here, the box indicates the, um, the construction. So transfer agency is, you know, an effect of the construction as a whole. And now in the first stage, this is essentially structural reanalysis. So now we reassociate the implicature of the construction as a meaning of her. Um, and what I mean by that is that previously the transference of agency is an effect of the multiple construction itself, right? But now we attributed it as uh, a property of the of, of the verb her. So in this case, her simultaneously has two meanings. So what is transferred is simultaneously the object and the agency for the recipient to do something with the object. And finally, in the fourth stage, these two kinds of transferences are separated. So her becomes polysemous, right? The transference of agency is no longer dependent on the transference of object. So if I transfer agency for you to do something, this is exactly causation, the kind of causation that we see in a her construction in SEG. And from here, we can further elaborate the construction to allow whether or not there is direct action, whether or not there is coercion, and whether or not the cause is agentive um, or not, right? So this is what I propose for the her construction, for the um, development of the her causative construction in SEG. Now, the hit construction, my argument is that it is the hit verb is a, is a semantically general verb used in a resolve construction. So the construction template is something like this. There's an agent that does something to the patient, and the patient is an undergoer of you know, a, a result, which is a change of state. So there are multiple verbs, acton verbs, that can go into this slot of the V1 initial action. For example, yep to crush, a yep be bright, a crush be dead, up to stew, a up be sucked, a stew be cooked, right? And one of them is hit, do, make, which is maximally general. So um, I'm going to skip example 11 for the interest of time. But the point is that, you know, how do we know that hit is better analyzed as a resolutive rather than as a causative? Well, the crucial evidence is that we never find in my corpus instances where hit, uh, hit causative construction co-occurs co-occurs with an extra specification of the causing event. So for example, we don't see an example like Paul hit my neck, so blow to make it cool. How we explain that? Well, I think what's happening is that hit, do and make, and Paul to blow are semantically um, you know, similar, right? So hit, in, hit is entailed by, by blow, right? If you blow, you're actively doing something to it, right? So these two verbs, 
compete for the same V1 slot, for the initial action slot. So only one of them accept is acceptable. That's why um, I don't find examples of pocket manegon um, in the, you know, in my in my corpus. And another piece of evidence is how the parallel construction using tam in Thai has been analyzed as a resolutive by um, Ted Kanyanan. So uh, these are two examples of hers. Uh, Suri do make bird die and Suri shot a bird dead, right? So she claimed that these are, you know, um, instances of the same type. So the implication is that there is actually no motivation to propose hit as a distinctive causative marker in SEC. And instead, we should just view it as a generic V1, which denotes initial action in a resolutive construction. And this is more parsimonious because, you know, a resolutive construction naturally affords this causative interpretation. So we, we have one, like, fewer construction in our inventory, which is um, more parsimonious, more economic. And lastly, we all take causative construction. So my argument is that it is an extension from the all motive of construction with a change of location as a second verb. So the template is this, mp1, all, takes, mp2, v2, or vp2, and vp2 is change of location, and there are different subtypes, but the general meaning is that mp1 gets in control of mp2 and gets mp2 to change location, right? So there are a few subtypes depending on um, a number of semantic um, parameters which I lay out here. So can we say mp1 takes mp2? Can we say mp1 does v2? Can we say mp2 does v2? Can we say mp, oh, sorry, um, does mp1 change location? And does mp2 change location? And if we lay out the, you know, the, 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 um, the types found in the text, we can see that, you know, one of these types only differs from our causative example, um, illustrated by number six, by one feature, and that feature is whether mp1 changes location uh, together with mp2, right? So the 14th, um, um, is, you know, would, uh, something that can be called switch subject. And here's an example. So, oh, how well, if the police are to cash us, they just, ca they just cash, and they escort us into jail. So the police moves along with us, but does not change location into the, sorry, um, uh, it changes location, but it, but is not the subject of the, uh, in a prison. And, uh, this is a reminder of example, um, six. Right? So in this case, you get us and you get us to move, but you don't move together. So if we compare with the other argument sharing options, we can see that 14 and 6 are the closest, right? So 15 is a different type. Uh, so this younger sibling got to take that child of mine down to town. So they move together, right? And 16, um, so take rice and go from home. So I get rice and go, so the rice moves with me, but the rice is not a subject of go from home. It's merely a theme that moves along with me, right? <coughs> so, um, to conclude this talk, um, first of all, uh, the synchronic aspects. I have shown that SAC has one full-fledged paraphrastic causative uh, motive of construction, um, which uses um, uh, her in a causative slot. There's also a resolutive multivoc construction that is interpretable as a causative. And then there's this emerging new paraphrastic causative, um, uses, which uses O in the, in the slot. The diachronic aspect, I'm not going to repeat that for the interest of time, but in the future, I predict two changes to the O causative construction. One is that O is going to become unstressed, and the other is the semantic generalization. So the second verb is going to be no longer restricted to change of location verbs, but the construction itself is going to be is going to remain dedicated to interpersonal manipulation. So essentially, it's going to develop into what's found in Mao Nan, right, which is the Gam Sui language. So the teacher take the uh, students to read a book, which means the teacher require the students to read the books. So this brings us to the comparative aspect of this study. So I have laid out the constructions found in SEC and, and uh, checked whether they have been described by some well-studied die languages and some recently described, um, you know, gum swai languages, which are of the same family. Um, so the thing about Thai is interesting because X take Y verb is not described as a causative for Thai, but the Thai can often accept it causative interpretation in certain contexts, which further brings us into further inquiries, right? So which is, 
In light of the analysis for SAC, can we propose an all causative construction for tie? So this is the example that Mike and Zeldin provided. A called B to take B return, which means, you know, A does not return together, right? And this is, you know, pretty much the same example as I provided for the SAC um, all causative construction. And the second um, question for further research is whether or not the hit um, do make results of construction is a valence changing device rather than a causalization strategy. So what do I say so? Well, in the examples um, that I have provided, the function of the result of construction does not really seem to be to repackage the event as causative, but to resolve the tension between propositional content and argument structure. So in terms of a propositional content, dragon flips boat has two participants, right? But the verb num is monovalent. So it subcategorizes for an S argument only. It has no zero derivation. And the same idea applies to neck cool, right? So these two verbs are not like the verb rock, which means to snap in sec. Uh, rock, um, um, you know, um, displays the argument uh, structure alternation properties. So is it the case that uh, the hit resulted is just a way to um, change the valency? And finally, uh, a limitation of the study is that I don't ha really have illicit data to support my hypothesis. So pretty much all the, all the examples come from tests. And we have to leave that to um, future research, um, future you know, field work after COVID. And these are the transcription system that I used and references. Thank you.